Bachi Bachi Book Club. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, those who lie betwixt or outside to yet another episode of the Bocce Bocce Book Club. I am your host, the Tomohiro Ishii of alienating those who are close to me, Squill, joined by Walk, and our first ever guest, Sam. This angry smacked ass, Sam the <laughs> VA mod, making what? me record at weird times. How you doing, Sam? Um, I apologize for time zones. It's okay. It's okay. You can't, you can't control how the world works. <laughs> Apart from yeah. that, I'm good. Yay! And so, hey. there's a methodness here in that this is a very special episode uh, in that we are covering Nigel McGuinness, yeah. who may or may not be uh, from <laughs> the same... Uh, no, is home <laughs> correct? Home region? Home region, I would say, yeah. Because I don't want to, do I don't want to dox myself, Squill. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Quick, <laughs> everyone, look up where Nigel McGinnis is from. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't Kent? It's like a county, right? Or like yeah. A, so, with... to give you a brief geography les uh, lesson, Kent is one of the home counties that surround London. Yes. And, and... Is, it, is there not a Kent? Kent, however. So dumb. No, there isn't. Okay, which is a great, which I guess is a great shame because then that would take, I that that would take the American way of naming a town, and it's just no, we didn't we didn't do that, which is a shame. Oh, this fucking guy. <laughs> because uh, I was wondering because in a bunch of the other uh, counties of England, there are just like just the capital city is also the county, which does yes. not make uh, googling at all uh, annoying. But yeah, they're Buckingham, Buckinghamshire, you know. We've got... <laughs> Sucks. Shropshire, Shropshire, yeah, you know, it, it, get, it gets weird. And then you start going at the old regions and then you start bringing up Wessex and how what that entails. And no, you, you're going too far with the historical geography. You, 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 stop at the, you stop at the modern counties. And I could get into Yorkshire, but we'll be here all day. But we're here to not talk <laughs> about really Yorkshire. Had... We have discussed for a lot, it seems like um, the sort of petty and silly differences uh, in regional English uh, feuds are very much like the Midwest. Um, like when mm. I say that people from Ohio um, have sex with farm animals and, uh, you know, worship which the is devil. True. Which is true. Uh, <laughs> but it seems to be very similar. Can you explain what Kent is like and how it produced Mr. Nigel Beginnis? So, Kent is described as the Garden of England in the UK, and I'm here to tell you that that's slightly true, in a sense, because there are two distinct qualities of Kent. There is the rural part of Kent, the where, where you how you picture England, rural greeneries, farmland, villages. The Shire. Basically, the Shire, in a nutshell. And then there's the... Then there's the other side of Kent, <laughs> which is basically uh, completely industrial, was absolutely gutted by Thatcher, by the Thatcher government, and is now basically in a state of disrepair. And everyone, government, local law enforcement, pretty much forgotten all of that about Kent. <laughs> oh, so it's like Detroit. <laughs> no, I cannot tell you enough how there are certain parts of Kent <laughs> that are like Detroit. I mean, there is a certain town in Kent that is the reason why the world was gifted the Chav. <laughs> in uh, according to my research, Nigel is from Staplehurst, and so is that the rural part or the urban decay part? Uh, I'm glad to tell you that Staplehurst is the rural part of Kent, Ooh. right near-ish, near Maidstone. I'm all surprised, honestly. <laughs> okay, so the important part, the reason I'm covering this background, because I find this fascinating, is so that Nigel at, goes to college on, like, a gap year, basically, to Kent, Ohio. And <laughs> I, 
I love Nigel. I think he's brilliant. However, my question is, what's the chance that he got on the wrong plane and just had <laughs> to like <laughs> pretend that he uh, he got on the right one when he got to Kent, Ohio? There's a strong chance. I would like to say there is a strong chance of that happening because, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> he must Ken... have been sitting on that plane for a while and just thinking, man, there must have been a lot of layoffs. I was going to say, why Why is suddenly Kent right near Chicago of all places? <laughs> is that well, Kent is basically... Plan? Kent is basically like uh, in between like Cleveland and proper rural Ohio, um, up near the lake. Uh, uh, Kent is the only thing of note there. And so while there, Nigel McGinnis uh, comes under the tutelage of one Les Thatcher, who's like sneakily the uh, like most important uh, people in like indie wrestling mm-hmm. in like last like. 10 years maybe because of his students uh which include but not are not limited to nigel himself john moxley sammy callahan bj whitmer matt striker the blade and shark boy let's go and that's the fishy line because, shark because boy shark said, boy said, so. said so and <laughs> technically shark boy is like my wrestling grandfather uh because the man who trained me for six months in indianapolis um was Jake Oman, who is the student of Shark Boy. So um oh, I am shell. like El Ijo yeah. de Shark Boy Jr. Oh shell. <laughs> yeah. I want that to be your first well, I want that to be your second gimmick, your mast gimmick when you need to take double book in school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Furthermore, so we have put together a collection of matches, um, three to watch since they're longer than like the 10 minute Lucha death matches we were watching. Uh, <laughs> and we purposely avoided uh, his Brian Danielson uh, matches because a Go certain watch, a, a uh, nondescript oh. man from an Asian country may or may not have made the definitive statement on uh Nigel McGuinness versus Brian Danielson. Yeah, I don't know who you're talking about, honestly. Yeah, me neither. It's, me neither, it, but it sounds familiar. It's not like a film. <laughs> There's no... Oh, man. Yeah. No, I sneezed. I sneezed. That is a, that is a very bad cold there. <laughs> <on> their walk. <laughs> uh, but because of that, uh, I actually think it's more interesting. Um, the selection we have because uh, it's not just wrestling the goat uh, over and over again. Um, which <laughs> Damn, is only I wonder like... if this match is going to be good. Yeah, so our very first match is Austin Aries versus Nigel McGuinness from ROH Rising Above 2007. Um, mm. Oddly, this is a weird time, because uh, if I remember correctly, he had started like dabbling in TNA during the same time, too. So, but yeah, if memory serves me correct, he was supposed to be part of Team UK for the Super X Cup of that year. But Doug Williams and Nigel both were double booked for Noah at the time. So they replaced Team UK with Team Mexico. <laughs> Basically is... the same place. <laughs> Basically yeah. the same place. Yeah, yeah that's King like... of Fighters ass booking. <laughs> And so, like, during his ROH world title run, like, the 545-day uh, reign, he's also, like, slowly sliding into the abyss uh, that is late uh, 2000s TNA, which is uh-huh. fascinating. But mm. in ROH, he is, in fact, producing great matches. And this comes in the middle of the card, which is really funny. Um, yeah. yeah. Even though... Like, Danielson Borshima's on this card. Uh, technically, the uh, main event, quote-unquote, is uh, Nat Omichi versus Claudio Castagnoli. Um, so it's very strange. Um, but this match itself <laughs> is fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, what cool. was your first impressions, Wok? Uh, of the match? Uh, I said yeah. match... Note number one, fucking Slayer. Because Slayer yes, is, that... the, is the theme for Austin? Yes. Sick. <laughs> So um, <laughs> and just a note on Austin Aries before we get too far. Uh, fuck that guy. 
Well, he's such a monumental Let waste of talent. <laughs> Because it just makes me sad because, like, I wish he sucked so that I, I didn't have to think about Austin Aries. Um, <laughs> but, he's, but he's good at then, his job, which is the worst part. Yeah, and then I, I watch this and I'm like, fuck, he is really good. He's good at his job. And he's an asshole. That exactly. tends to go together, weirdly enough. <laughs> um, I also added a note. This is so far, all my notes have been not on the match itself. Uh-huh. Uh, I have Nigel has insane hair. Uh, yes, yes, he does. An, it's just a general note on his uh, <laughs> spiky. Uh, what are those like Koopas that have like the spikes on the top of their heads? <laughs> he looks yes. like that. It's a it's the Koopa plus like Billy uh, Billy Idol, and we you've sort of yes. hit somewhere in that. Yes, yes, I agree. The Koopa <laughs> Idol. Um. Nigel's a face in this match. Which is fun. I had to explain to Walk that basically Danielson's bullying went so far that eventually the ROH audience was like, all right, uh, we're going to cheer for this guy now because we just feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, Best way to make a face. Is just have the greatest of all time bully them. Just um, shits all over this poor boy. So the match starts and it's pretty standard until a a certain uh dive oh. <laughs> yeah that looks like what actually like Roosh had a match with um the the fake Laparka uh where the guy unfortunately died by just going headfirst into a barricade because uh yeah. the timing was off and this is like scarily close to that because this is a very real concussion just. and it's sort of changes the what this match is going to be yeah it's worse when you realize that nigel's working injured in this match as well because he's still suffering from bicep problems due to kind of like like stiff lariats that he's been accruing oh, yeah. over his career he, he and then that. he goes and has this he, he gets a massive concussion and not only that but the force of how aries threw himself into nigel and the way he collided with the guardrail and then the the metallic advertising board cut <laughs> his eyebrow something fierce. It's nasty. Oh, as hell, it is. It? And what's even yeah, he has the bicep as you aforementioned taped up, and it like reminds me of like Kobashi had to have surgery because he had nerd da- <laughs> his yeah, nerve damage yeah. from hitting people so hard. <laughs> and so Nigel's got that, and now he's got brain damage to really, uh, you know. To wrap it all together. The uh, career destroying algebra. I wonder why this man had a, sh- a short career. Yeah, it's <laughs> almost. Uh, uh, but how he recovers is really fun. Uh, yes. Be- because Ares is like, uh, ironically mentioned Shark Boy, but he's a shark that smells blood. Um, and he's just really fun, even though he's smaller. He's such like a shit heel uh, <laughs> in like a good way. Um, and his limb work is like genuinely amazing throughout this. Yeah, I added that uh, he was working the injured arm very well during the whole match. Uh, he really kept on working on it, and in a very consistent. safe way. Yeah, mm. um, which I love because he's working around the fact that Nigel is has a very real head injury, <laughs> um, so he's going after the the injured arm that's kind of injured. Uh, mm-hmm. And in kayfabe, you know, is absolutely injured, like horribly mm-hmm. um, to get around the fact that he's actually like barely conscious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also noted that Nigel was doing this weird arm bar the whole time. Yes. Uh, um, I with the submission grappling background I have. Most of the time, when a guy is going for submission grappling plus, like, you know, enough pro wrestling, I can call out most holds, uh, as I do to annoying effect while we're watching matches on call. That happens um, a lot. Um, it genuinely <laughs> confounds me what the arm lock he's doing is called. Because the, um, the, like, the... The arc shitty like Chiron, so they put up the graphics uh, beforehand. Just describes it as arm lock, and I I know what it's called. Funnily enough, oh, oh okay, 
Because soon you. enough, because that's one. Of, it's a new finisher around that time that you decided to implement the the arm lock in the cobra clutch position or the camel clutch yeah. position, basically. And he ended up naming it the London Dungeon. Oh, oh that's lovely. okay. That's pretty Stay fun. Because it, it looks <laughs> like it's like a the cobra clutch position, and he's like working the arm the same way you would. Um, with like a uh, omoplata, um, mm. it, but like reversed and nothing because he's cranking it with his legs like you would an omoplata, but he's <laughs> facing him like you would a kimura. Yeah. Um, and I'm just <laughs> intensely confused, uh, by that, but it looks sick, it really does, it's, it's intense. And I was it's saying pretty... it's, it's bullshit in the same way like a properly applied sharpshooter is. Mm -hmm. where like <laughs> there's no there's no actual damage being done um but if it you like like it hurts if you just like crank it in the right way it looks awesome mm -hmm. uh what's mm. your next note walk uh i said damn lariat yes um, yeah. so, so walk you should know sam is lariat sexual um, mm. <laughs> I recommended him to watch Satoshi Kojima matches on the sole basis that, like, Lariat is his entire personality. I love yes. me a good um, Lariat. I love me a good Stan Hansen. I like me a good, uh, uh, Hangman. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like me a good Lariat. Not Logan Paul, though. I don't like that guy. Uh, <laughs> who does? Yeah. <laughs> Logan Paul. Honestly. Another guy I hate, uh, for how good he is at his job. <laughs> <laughs> But let's note that Lariat. Yes, so th the way he just folds people is a reoccurring theme throughout these matches, and also just goes to the uh, the selling of Austin Aries, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, because that bump is, like, speaking from experience, is so hard to time um, that front bump, because if you time it wrong, it looks like he just sort of taps you, and then you just do a somersault forward. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of precision. Like, it helps because of the fact that he's actually hitting you really hard. Um, <laughs> yeah. But just do it too you. late or too early, and it looks ridiculous. Mm. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I also... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, the floating roll. control of Ares is also something I love. Um, which from a submission grappling concept is sort of like chainings, um, instead of like working through one position. Cause uh, they always say the ethos of like jujitsu is position over submission and catch wrestling is submission over position. Um, so he's doing it in a way, not unlike if you watch like Minoru Suzuki and Pan Crace, mm. uh, where it's very fluid, where he's constantly flowing uh, from place to place. And Sam, you can speak to that as one of the only other people on earth who spend this much time watching Pan Crace fights. <laughs> yeah, it was actually really nice to see a very good ebb and flow in terms of exchanges on the ground from the both of them. Although there were a couple of mounted segments. I was like, I'm on. I know this is something I'm going to have to talk about with Squill. <laughs> well, <laughs> indeed. And they made it look convincing as well, which is, a, I guess it's, it's surprising how hard of a thing that is to do for people that are in wrestling. <laughs> it's... Well, because I think that there's a idea of either if they're trying to make it r realistic, they'll just latch on one submission and just like crank it, um, mm. and like they'll do like one jujitsu reversal or something. Um, but if you watch like really high level, like we're talking like not even just MMA, but like ADCC, those guys are just like spinning around in like uh, this maelstrom because they're constantly trying different submissions, um, and they're they're bailing. Um, and these two do a really good job of that because you don't want to overcommit. And yeah. you so rarely in wrestling, um, that proper sort of like give and take. And I don't necessarily think of Nigel for his mat work. Um, and he's really thoughtful in this. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just to add more notes, uh, Aries does lucha chops. Yes. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> he, he has some aggressive ass chops. He does it penta style, where he does like a whip crack motion. <laughs> uh, it's sweet. It's so cool. Uh, just a little note. Uh, nothing too big. Uh, but Ares hits the shit out of Nigel. 
And I think there's some really good pacing um, because this match is just a little bit over 20 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. But even with the, the mat work, it never feels... No. Like at all. And, like, also, uh, Nigel is working an arm triangle choke uh, throughout this, and it's mm-hmm. never boring, which is impressive because yeah. an arm triangle choke just doesn't play well um, to the camera because mm-hmm. um, you are sh- physically shoving your head into one of their arteries um, <laughs> and just sort of trying to, like, brute force make them pass out. But he makes it look really excellent. Which is a very Nigel way of trying to submit somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, his idea is like, no, 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 I'm just going to squeeze, I'm going to use my hurt bicep to squeeze your neck on one side and just jam my head into your uh, the other side of your neck. If there's any word to describe Nigel McGinnis, it's bully. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? And even when he's a fun bully here. he's He just likes to push people around. And... Even when he's com- incredibly concussed. Yes. <laughs> Which make, make him more of a bully. <laughs> which again makes he some just of the dumb shit. Which makes some of the lariat spots, especially the rope hung lariat he does to Ares that sees Ares flip out of the ring, make it even yeah. more. I'm surprised mm-hmm. and also grateful that he landed that perfectly. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like when uh, when like Kyle O'Reilly does the same spot, he does it like pretty. It doesn't look as good as Nigel's, obviously, because he was a smaller man and he's not hitting him as hard. Mm-hmm. But it always looks calculated when he's going back and hitting those ropes. But yeah. Nigel, perhaps because he's concussed, is just like <laughs> flailing into the ropes, sort of like oh a like a kill sea world, um, and then just <laughs> praying upon God that Austin can bump correctly. Yep. <laughs> and the blood uh, throughout this is awesome. Oh yeah, great uh, blood, great bleeding. And I, I also question how well he could see um, because of the blood over the eye. Yeah, it's so over the eye. <laughs> it's like he's wearing a face mask or like a Robin mask. A crimson he mask, if you will, brother. Ooh! <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> what might even say? Um... And later in the match, um, Austin does start going to the top turnbuckle. Mm-hmm. Um, which is the part in which, like, sometimes, because Austin Aries is very ROH. There's no other way I can describe him other <laughs> than, like, very ROH. Sometimes that's where they lose me, but uh, I think he does it pretty well. Because there's yeah. a sense of desperation that he can't, um, he can't stay down with the bully. No, mm. of course. He has to do some top rope shot. Shit, but that ends up not working out well when you go to the buckle with uh, old Nigel because he mm-hmm. starts using the the mo- most one of the most based moves in wrestling. I'm gonna say, uh, the Tower of London. Yes, that move is sick. Oh. It's so it's so like basic but perfect. Because I was talking about Walk the other day about how I love I love like old school like face busters DDTs. Mm-hmm. Uh, neck yeah. breakers, anything that's just spiking like a vital area of the body onto the mat. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the Tower of London is ostensibly just spiking a guy's face onto the mat, and it looks yep. great. It looks so cool, and especially how Nigel sets it up. Uh, I have here. Uh, he uses a euro, and then he moves it into a Tower of London. Mm. Thick as hell. Um, there was another Tower of London transition somewhere in there. I just have wrote a badass Tower of London transition. Yeah. Uh, uh and we... go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had mentioned the hell yeah lariat on the ropes, and then mm. we get to our finishing stretch of the match, uh, where we get to the brain buster counter, and then mm. we end it off with. The Jawbreaker Lariat. Can we talk Which about the is... Jawbreaker Lariat? Mm. That move is sick as hell, but it's different from, like, a buckshot, like, appeal-wise. They're both basically the same move, with mild differences, uh, mm-hmm. where the rope, where they hit the ropes and stuff like that. But Nigel's is interesting, because, like, there's sort of a slow build-up to it. It's just, yeah. like, it's loading up like a catapult, and he just shoots himself forward and just crushes a dude. 
And this and, is perhaps the best Jawbreaker Lariat he ever gives. Probably because instead of in spite of the fact that he can barely see and is questionably conscious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for sure. Probably right, right. as close to a shoot Lariat he ever did. Mm-hmm. Very cool. You have any final thoughts on this one, Sam? Oh, other than it's just it's it's a crazy old match and it's one of those that at this time there was a lot of divisiveness about Nigel because he had to come out of a few like to pull out of a few shows because of injury and the crowd. There were certain people in the crowd that did not like Nigel that night. And if anything, I think he he gave his blood in the middle of that ring to show them that I am a fighting champion and I will crew more injuries just to make sure you're happy. As a matter of fact, it was the show after this at Ring of Honor. He gave that very famous promo about, you know, saying, screw you. These injuries are the reason I do deserve this belt. (laughs) Badass. I love that. Uh, promo all right so the our second match we have here in the series uh is versus jimmy rave rest in peace um yeah i know um and it does actually happen in england and walk noted that the it's in liverpool so we got some (laughs) scousers Um, and uh you had a note on the crowd i believe uh, yeah, this is the most British sounding crowd ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most English crowd, I should say. I don't know where yeah. it is. There are a lot of football charts in this match. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sort of just incoherent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it sounds like I'm listening to a bunch of orcs. It's badass. <laughs> <laughs> that is every Saturday afternoon here in England when they when the football's on. I I cannot I cannot stress how much that that, that sound is every Saturday in England. <laughs> Sam, I'll have like, you know your people are very funny to me. Actually, you know what, Walk? You're right. They really are a funny bunch of people. <laughs> well, I explained I explained to my brother. Uh, we were talking about uh, we were talking about English accents. I was like, look. If they're in the north, they're a pack, and if in the, they're in the south, they're an osprey, and that's how you uh, you figure out the difference <laughs> in the accents. <laughs> right, right, pot dead, bruv. That's an osprey. Bruv. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I was I was telling Sam this uh, uh, in my summer job. One of my coworkers um, is from Brighton, and I could not understand anything he said <laughs> for the like the entire thing. And that's a southern <laughs> accent as well, Squill. So. Yeah. Boy. I think, I think, I can't remember where you said uh, the shift is, but somewhere in between Kent and uh, and Brighton, and it becomes incomprehensible. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Essex. Okay. So I, yeah. blame, I blame Will Ospreay. All right. Yeah, okay. Right. We can all agree to do that. Um, <laughs> but... Crap. <laughs> Crowd aside, uh, this is uh, well. I mean, and because of the crowd, partially, um, this is awesome. Uh, because like Jimmy Rave, I think I said if Darby Allen wasn't straight edge, um, yep. he would be Jimmy Rave. Uh, and it's a yes, very Darby performance here, for sure. Uh, absolutely. You wanna, do you have any thoughts on Jimmy Rave's career, Sam? Other than he was. Honestly, in that time when you had people like Joe, Brian, Nigel, Homicide, those guys that really were the pillars of Ring of Honor, Jimmy Rave, I think, when it comes to talking about the history of Ring of Honor, is incredibly underappreciated as a talent, honestly. It's only that I feel like it's the only, uh, only the diehards of ROH around that time, people like me that were watching it around that time, truly speak mm. of Jimmy Rave with such reverence. Mm. Well, it's because he has... Bless him. He has the thankless like Darby Darby dies match sort of uh, yeah. role yeah. in every match he's in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most every promotion has their Darby. They have their Spike Dudley. They have their list goes on of dudes that will just get murdered live on camera. And I can only <laughs> describe him as like an anti work rate uh, wrestler. Like mm. he's like sort of the opposite of what a lot of guys here are doing in the. Uh, the uh in roh because he's doing character work with the embassy um 
and then just instead of like he he's not he's no slouch in sort of like technical exchanges, but he just wants you know to be dropped on his head. You gotta respect a man for wanting to be dropped on the head. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I I have a note as a yes. highly unexperienced Jimmy Rave head. Mm-hmm. Uh, he looks That's like a smack ass in this. Uh, he, he does he, not look. He's not the most photogenic uh Respectfully. Man. Respectfully. Yeah. No, respect for the dead, but he does look like a bit like the smacked ass of the, the night. There was an aesthetic of He looks know, like a dude wrestlers. named Jimmy Rave. Yes. He <laughs> does look like a guy named Jimmy Rave. Uh but we should talk about the match. Yeah. Mm. Uh I my first note is God damn. I don't know what for. I should be more descriptive whenever I add those notes. <laughs> uh, well, so I'm assuming it's when chair. Nigel smashes the chair over his head? Yeah. Uh, so this is a fight without honor. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and these two decided, because it goes outside basically immediately, mm-hmm. um, and they decided chairs in the barricade are their two best friends. Yes. Oh, is God. the barricade in ROH or guardrail, whatever you want to call, it, is like a character uh, in ROH matches mm. because it's mm-hmm. always there. It's dependent, painful. Yep. I mean, my 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 note here is: who keeps a barricade under the ring? Surely you keep those with the ring crew, just in case. That's right up there <laughs> with the lone chair that Nigel McGuinness found. It was yeah. It yeah. was. It's comical how there was like no extra equipment. It was just a chair underneath there, and it was just like, <laughs> "Boy, because also no, Nigel, <laughs> Nigel just stole Bobby Cruz's chair." Basically, <laughs> he could have just grabbed a chair like from the audience as well. Like I guarantee you, these these drunken scousers would g- gladly hand him a chair to hit Jimmy Rave with. But the ecstatic joy that the crowd got when uh, Nigel pulled up the chair, and they were just like, Ooh. "Super, super night, super night <laughs> again!" <laughs> it does. If if walruses could do soccer chants, um, that does sort of <laughs> sum up the uh, crowd. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Scousers, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm afraid of them. I, I have no oh. plans on returning to England. And if I do, <laughs> then I'm in trouble, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what's your next note? Jimmy cooking with the chops. He is, yes. He is uh, chopping yes. the shit out of Nigel. Just... I do love the, the smaller guy sort of overcompensating by just going as hard as he can. Uh, that's always just real pleasing, quite honestly. Going full volume. Just constant. And uh, a good note about Jimmy. He knows that he is the underdog in this situation. And he knows Hard. that the crowd wants to see his blood. Yes, he is. He. This is the equivalent of throwing out uh, in like a gladiatorial times just a poor slave boy to go against <laughs> a lion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> no. And uh, is am I mis- is Nigel the champion at this time? No, he. I think this is a few months before he beats Morishima for the title. Okay, okay. As a matter of fact, yeah, I, think I don't remember so him coming out with the title. Prior. Yeah, two months prior. Yeah. yeah. And if uh, I was to be correct, this is nearly almost exactly a year to the day in the exact same building. He had one of my fa- well, possibly my favorite match of all time. And it that is, is that arena is what's it called? Olympia, I think. Correct. Yes, that is a really nice arena. Well, not I... nice, but you understand <laughs> I, I, what we I'm should saying. note yes. the arena uh, as well. It is a smaller area, and the production is not great on this match for the. But record. in a way that's <laughs> undoubtedly way. charming. Yeah, it, yes. it makes all of the hits sound crispy, and just by complete accident, I think the production is awesome. Uh, yeah, very crispy. Very. That's probably why I was talking about uh, Jimmy cooking with the chops. Uh, it's so just chunk chunky. It's just it. Fe- it sounds good, 
in yeah, the, the audio in the crowd quality peaking the mics. Just awesome. Just an awesome vibe. The audio quality is suspect. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but not in a way that, you know, takes away from anything. Um, I I prefer this to whatever the fuck like the British indies are doing um now with their production. Uh, but that's that's a discussion for another day that Sam and I have had many so times. Many times. Uh, off of my... I think the only note I thing I know about like British indies is there's this one clip from a deadlock sync where there's a blue cane. Yes. And yes. it's an okane or something. Yeah. British yeah. indies are odd. He's well, called blue he's called Blue Pain now. Oh, okay, sorry. I wouldn't want to dead name him. Blue I Pain. I know, right? I know. And blue Pain. During Pride Month. Brother. <laughs> Happy Pride Month, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Soccer <laughs> kicks are legal during June. Hell yeah. Uh I, I will is one oh, thing to just say. Uh progress looks like the camera operator did nothing but speed uh before uh <laughs> start yeah <laughs> uh i guess we should i should also have a note on the camera work they have some new japan ass camera shots sometimes there i uh, there is a little I bit see, too much i saw Nigel's what Nigel get us ate <laughs> for yeah. breakfast this morning Jeez. <laughs> uh. the trunks he has are a little too small and it's just i've seen i saw more of nigel mcginnis in this match that i'm comfortable <laughs> there was some Crazy shots. For, for a moment, I thought you were going to say that. I've seen so much of Nigel, I started calling him by his real name. <laughs> <laughs> Which is come, come Wolf bit, Steven, Hammer, please. whatever his name is in TNA. Desmond <laughs> Wolf. Desmond Wolf. Wolf Hammer is what I'm going to refer to him as. Brother. Wolf Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which is, is, his shoot name is also aggred- aggressively English, which is Stephen Haworth. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, that is a that is, that 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 is that is a that is a name that came straight out of Kent. I'll tell you that. Much. That's, Kent, <laughs> that's Kent shit. What's your Whatever. next note on the actual match? Uh yeah. Um. Uh, I had mentioned the guardrail spots. Yes. Um, mm. it gets worse. Um, <laughs> uh, when they pull out a guardrail and start using it as a weapon. Yeah. And, you know, Joe and Necro Butcher were a day removed from the anniversary of that match. Uh, would they would name. be proud of the usage of the guardrail. Yes. Oh, this Although I imagine a, spots. um, a, uh, Ian Rotten guardrail is infinitely more dangerous than a R. Wage guardrail. Oh, for sure. The, I assume the guardrail is at least like a little gimmicked. Yeah, versus in Necro Butcher Joe, I assume that Ian Rotten stole it from somebody, uh, and you know it's just like what? actual steel. Ian Rotten? No, yeah. he'd never. No, that. he's come a good boy. You, you, you probably need a tetanus shot after that. After using that guardrail, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> Well, you need a rabies shot if you like get within like ten feet of IWA Mid South. <laughs> I think uh, I'm starting to itch. Can we continue? Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what happens to poor Jimmy with this guardrail spot? Is <laughs> oh, he like I I forget the move exactly because I my note is just. Uh, Joey Styles ask where I said, "Oh my God, Jimmy bent the thing, but the, but the guardrail, and then uh, yeah, is it like a power bomb or I believe it's a suplex. Yeah. Suplex, that's fine. All right, yes, that, so that's even more messed up, honestly. Mm. And yes, there is a sickening like bend uh, mm. in the guardrail, and then Nigel flips it um, so that the bend is facing up. So that he can hit him again against it. Um, With a slingshot. Yeah. Oh, it's gross. That's so nasty. The way Jimmy Rave bounces off shit when he hits it is so gross. I see where the painkiller addiction came in. (laughs) For real, though. Uh, The way I described how Nigel is treating Jimmy in this match, it's like he owes him money. (laughs) 
<laughs> and it is the indies, so there's a non-zero chance that like everybody owes everybody money. <laughs> In Rotten, who? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I think I don't uh, know if I've ever told this story on air, um, but my coach aforementioned did once have to like vaguely threaten Ian Rotten to pay him. So that's very real. I assume that happened a lot. Mm. Which is apparently Paul Heyman has so much guile that they never got like the big scary men who worked for him to uh, physically threaten him. I'm surprised 911 wasn't asking for that paycheck all the time. <laughs> and so a lot of this match, sort of the control segment from Nigel, is just truly like the stuff mm-hmm. that's just like makes me wince. Because um, mm-hmm. I would actually be curious to see the time of how much of this match actually takes place in the ring versus uh, outside of it. It has to be like three quarters out of the ring, right? Probably more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you watched it last night, Sam. Uh, do you remember how much actually is in the ring? Probably about several minutes tops of the whole yeah. match. Because I feel like the only bits that I like that are kind of probably most memorable in the ring is when Nigel um, slingshots Jimmy into the guardrail. Yeah, and the Tower of London to the chair spot, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, it's yeah. so cool. Uh, and it's really interesting because uh, it reminds me of sort of like a a a, a, a Japanese match where there's mm. no there's no near falls until like the very end, because yeah. um, mm-hmm. they got all their kickouts in right at the end. Yep. Yep. Uh, including. This very funny, obviously improvised kick out where uh, oh. Nigel McGuinness slips on a chair, <laughs> comedy style. Oh, it's so good. He just whoop, 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 and then he falls on the ground, and you can see the joy in Jimmy's face when he sees that he can pin Nigel for a moment. <laughs> he just ha, and then runs over and like goes in one. I think it's not even a two. Yeah, and Nigel just immediately kicks out. <laughs> I love uh. I love Nigel, but as we've sort of established, he's a blunt for weapon. Um, mm-hmm. So that kind of thing is incredibly funny. And it's very it's very down to the Les Thatcher ethos. Um, if you remember those other students like, you know, John Moxley and fucking Sammy Callahan, they came for stiff Sammy Callahan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's, I guess I'm saying there's not. I, I'm sure he, you know, he has a great mind for wrestling, but the finesse is not necessarily what he's known for. For sure. <laughs> uh, so to continue, mm-hmm. uh, I believe Nigel hits a rainmaker. Yes, yes, he uh, which does. leads to a kickout. So kayfabe is broken. Sad. Uh. Chekhov's rail guard. So the, yes. the rail guard is still set up. That never went away. So I had predicted a spot where Nigel uh, was going to toss Jimmy Rave off the top rope into the guardrail. And to quote Squill, that's not going to happen. That would kill him. Yes. <laughs> uh, well. <yeah. laughs> well. <laughs> Jimmy Rave is kind of thrown. Uh, into the guardrail, and it does look like it kills him. Yeah. Just straight murder. I do appreciate, uh, it looks like it's done, safe is a relative term here, um, it does look like it's done to maximize his probability of survival, I guess I'll say. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, because it's sort of like, where you look at, like, when Darby takes a bump like that, um, he makes sure he never lands on his head. Um, because he's so small, he can like twist all weird, um, mm-hmm. and make sure it bounces off it. Yeah, and yes, he does not. He is still Jimmy. Why Jimmy Rave wins mm-hmm. this match? Uh, he does indeed live through this. There's an ankle lock in this. Yes, just which is weirdly foreshadowing our next match, but. Uh, <laughs> 
<sighs> as, as a personal note, I will say I have something about the ankle lock that bothers me, um, which is that <laughs> yeah, yeah. in submission grappling, um, an ankle lock is a different position or a different submission. And what they call an ankle lock in pro wrestling is a toe hold. You tell him. <laughs> well, it's just that a toe hold, you literally grab the toe, the, like grab at the toes, and then you figure for your your uh, hands and just crank the shit out of their uh, their leg. Mm. And I don't know how that got switched in pro wrestling, like when they decided that, but it's weird. Because uh... an ankle lock is cranking the ankle in submission grappling. Yeah. But they're cranking the toe, like the at the toes. On I mean, the eventually foot. it breaks the ankle. Yeah, after you <laughs> break their foot in half. Ah, uh, you know. It's not here nor there. A broken foot is a broken foot, no matter where it is. <laughs> That's it, right. It's always on CM Punk. That's always where the broken <laughs> broken foot. CM Punk. <laughs> uh, I. Oh, this is where my notes devolve. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just... I have at number 20. Oh, my God. Yes. So the finishing stretch um, is back to the uh, Jimmy Rave dies portion. Because uh, we have a, a rebound lariat. Um, it's very, you know, like Tenryu. Because mm -hmm. uh, Nigel's a nerd. Um, and then, yes, it is the Jawbreaker lariat. Uh, Jawbreaker. Which against an older man than Austin Aries. Looks like he just dies. Just smashes poor guy in half. <laughs> Do you just have any him. other thoughts on this one? Uh, Sam? Uh, oh, okay. Other than, other than the most infamous uh, but I call famous spot of this match with the guardrail now at a 90 degree angle. Yeah. Nigel, feel, Nigel believes that one Tower of London isn't enough and decides to give Jimmy Ray the Tower of London straight onto the guardrail. So cool. It really is just beautiful. So and sweet. I wonder why so many of these indie guys uh, developed like substance abuse problems and died. You know? It's almost like, well, it's, we've, uh, Walk and I have discussed, uh, how insane, um, <laughs> Super Dragon being alive is. Yes. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure I get it. <laughs> uh, I've, in my head, I like to think that Super Dragon has the ability to make people immortal, along with himself, which is why he's able to inflict such crazy bumps to people. That, that tracks. <laughs> Uh, but yes, good lariat yeah. finish, go home. That's yep. kind of what I have. Yep. yep. That's and now that's Nigel McGinnis versus God. Jimmy Rave. And now we enter TNA in a ah. three degrees of pain match, brother. That's right, brother. Which is one of the <laughs> one, yes. of the, one of the <laughs> dumbest stipulations. Uh because according to Cage Match. One three degrees of pain match ever, and it's this one. Gotta love um, TNA. I'm they're gonna the play first, fabulous Mula on a pole, brother. In which you have <laughs> the first fall is by only by pinfall can you win. The second fall only by submission can you win. Third fall only by cage escape. I can literally see the tap out on the fucking graphic for this match. It's ridiculous. Russo! <laughs> so, Russo! Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Walk the other day was asking who who uh, who booked the um, Kurt Angle uh, divorce on screen. No. Uh, sort of song. And I'm like, his name rhymes with Rince Vuso. <laughs> Russo! Poor Kurt. <sighs> Poor Kurt. Oh, All right, oh, Sam. As someone say... who watched it unfold live, Please uh, explain the saga of Desmond Wolf. So, Desmond Wolf. Nigel, actually, before this, I think about a month prior to him debuting, actually was tentatively signed to the WWE alongside Brian. But as we all know, unfortunately, he failed a pre screening physical from an old bicep injury. I wonder why. <laughs> Thing is, though, all if you've ever watched The Last of McGuinness, 
uh, really sad documentary, by the way, mm-hmm. but actually essential watch if you really want to watch more Nigel. Uh, he talks about, well, no, the doctors cleared me. They didn't. The WWE doctors didn't clear me. But every other doctor barring theirs said that I was more than happy to and more than more than healthy enough to, to be cleared to wrestle. Uh, but he does say that at a time that uh, he wished that he didn't say anything like Brian did with his history of concussion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just imagining, about... like, imagining oh. his bicep is, like, hanging limp, uh, <laughs> yeah. barely attached. Mm-hmm. It's like, but no, yes. it's good. But back to TNA. Yeah. Yes, about a month later, he signs with the company and debuts on the 22nd of October 2009 episode, setting his sights clear on Kurt Angle. He batters Angle in his first match, which was a street fight on the next week's episode of Impact, though Kurt would get his win on Wolf at that month's turning point, which brings us to the Three Degrees of Pain match, which basically is the three stages of hell, but then they realise that they can't license that because that's a WWE term, and, you know, it's it's confusing. (laughs) I also wanted to ask, why do you think fundamentally they didn't understand uh what they had in nigel because he seems perfect we were talking about like he is a really fun promo um and it seems like he was perfect for silly tna when they were just having people go cause brain damage in the ring and then do dumb shit outside of it what what went wrong two people hulk hogan and eric bischoff yeah they oh. never, they they just did not understand what they had with uh with Nigel. Yeah, granted, they gave him a valet and they put him in fortune. Um, oh, the greatest underst- faction ever of all time. They're going to change some things. Um, but they never <laughs> underst- they never understood what they ever had with Nigel. I mean, there was the most famous of that is of course when um TNA did the poll about who should be. Who should be challenging for the world championship? And the two weeks, Desmond Wolf was the number one choice. And then after the yeah. third week, they stopped it because the third week was Desmond Wolf at number one. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the long suffering nature of uh, TNA fans. Like, of course, the the greatest uh, Marky D, um, uh, <laughs> who just like just the the suffering of um of like people who just keep like like a car crash you can't look away from because there's so much promise within there like even uh like modern tna for Mm. a while is sort of like a retirement home um for roh (laughs) vets uh until Mm. like this weird modern era we're getting into um but it's always just been some sort of beautiful money laundering scheme uh that was an excuse to pay people who get paid a living wage otherwise so thanks Mm -hmm. tna i think when it was being run by jeff jarrett anyway (laughs) it's my world my world we do fun fact i share the same birthday as uh jeff jarrett so you can thank me for slapping nuts I said slapped ass. Speaking of slapped asses, uh, Nigel Uh-oh. McGinnis's haircut. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Who lined my boy up? No one. Yeah. That razor just went all in. He is bald yeah. as a boulder. Yeah, I think that was apparently... The rumor is... This isn't true. I don't know if this is 100% true. Okay. Or if it's just a rumor. Apparently, he was told to cut it by, by WWE. The, the 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 Billy Idol hooligan haircut. Oh, you mean his shame. entire personality? Exactly, exactly. He was told oh to have God. that cut by WWE, <laughs> which uh, would be a great shame. Either that, or he bleached it so much that he absolutely burned and singed his hair off. <laughs> the fact the fact that he has any hair now is a miracle. <laughs> like yep. hair that looks normal. I wish he had hooligan hair. <laughs> We've got a couple. We've got a couple of months until we could possibly have that, guys. Come on, just oh. we. I'm hoping and praying that, that yeah. Nigel will make it to all in London. Because if you look currently, like his I... hairline in AEW is like miraculous for all of the suffering he inflicted uh, upon his own hair. He looks like a normal dude. It's yeah, magic. It's that magic. 
It is that magic, isn't it? <laughs> it's that Keith healing magic. They have little I would... like, healing pools, right? <laughs> I would prefer, though, to think Kent, that whatever. to become Kurt Angle, you have to, or to defeat Kurt Angle, you have to try to become him. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, you, you know the yeah in like a like a incomprehensible English accent would be the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm> not... <laughs> yeah. But Nigel ah. is just Nigel is just where I can understand him, much like Sam. Thank this you. Is true. I can hear <laughs> what he's saying. Slightly. <laughs> Slightly. Because uh, how oh. long how long have you because you you're somewhere non I will like say like anything too specific but like you're somewhere in the london area generally right sam correct so how long has have you uh been there to sort of slightly take away from the ken accent i um, most of my 20 there you go okay <laughs> well you're you didn't specify it's your 220s um because you're in a, a vampire <laughs> that's a vicious rumor that is spread about me on the internet that is neither true yeah by your no. co-hosts <laughs> you have uh as for the actual match uh we have the entrances um of course uh this is perk angle um at quite cl very close to his perkiest quite possibly um and man the veins like you can tell uh, the Big degree cool. of perk angle uh, by how the veins in his forehead are doing. Yup. He uh, is and crazy it is looking. He, uh, you can see the blue in his eyes shifting colors as the match <laughs> goes on. It is insane. He is a uh, crazy it, looking man. And also, um, Taz is on the call, which I just want to point out is nice. Yeah, it's Taz. Taz is always just such a welcome uh, he's, presence on commentary. He's always good. I And I will not accept otherwise. Aside from whenever he says, that's a shoot, brother, that's the only thing I have an issue with, with Taz. But even then, yeah. it's like, okay, that's fine. Because it's Taz. He's, his silly ass is trying to... He somehow mixes color and play-by-play -play perfectly, where he'll oh. like try to make pro wrestling shit seem legit. Well, I think you mean he's from, he's trying to make, he is professional, but he's from Long Island. Oh, yeah. Well, Brother. this is true. Brother. <laughs> yeah. So what are you guys' uh, impression on the first fall of the match, where it can only be won by pinfall? Um, where, where is my note? I'm sorry, I have a, let's see here. N Sam, start us off. Um... Uh... Honestly, I feel their first fall was definitely made to be let's get some big spots going to kind yeah. of rather than rather than build up to them. Let's let's get them all out, out of the way for the first one. So we like like you had the big buckle bomb that angle yes. hits on Nigel. Oh, oh it's so I'm gonna call him Nigel. I'm calling him Nigel for this. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, uh, I'll thank you very much. It's Wolf Hammer. Wolf Hammer. <laughs> Wolfenstein. <laughs> Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah. Uh, uh, Angle goes for a fiver of Germans against uh, von Wolfenstein. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I love id Software when he hits that big tower of <laughs> big tower of London from uh, from, <sighs> and from, TNA, the, from the big DNA wolf. undersells the Tower of London and it makes so me much. Oh. It really does. Taz is just like, oh, we hit the Tower of London. Yeah, oh, yeah. Get it's like, like anyhow, it, brother. <laughs> he does not say brother that much. I will not take this heat on my boy Taz. But he, uh, but there is a great counter angle does where he goes for a second. Uh, um, <laughs> El Wolfio goes for a second Tower of London, but counters they get, gets countered into an angle slam, and then we get the mood salt. Angle's like, you know what? I've already perked out my head and this devoted the first fall. I got to get the mood salt in, <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, for sure. But uh, oh, he turns he turns of throughout this match, by the way. Down. Yes. Like he starts at like a tomato and ends like somewhere around Thanos like territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> he looks like a Benadryl. He is crazy looking. Uh, uh, yeah. the, it just sort of. Oh. It just sort of ends though. 
Yeah, it's a Lariat and Tower of London for a free. Very convincing yeah. fashion, actually. That, no, um... for sure. I wooed Werewolf of London hits that crazy style. <laughs> he does great. <laughs> um... And uh, props to Angle for, uh, you know, putting him over. I mean, you know, he wins the match, but still, he's doing his best. Because uh, there's I... actually a quote from Kurt Angle who said, the most talented wrestler he ever worked with outside of the WWE was Nigel McGuinness. Yeah. Apparently, he was the first person he wanted to work with. Um, or, awesome. or Kurt Angle was like, he made a beeline for him when he got signed because he was like, who is this guy that's beating me in the PWI 500? <laughs> I need to yeah. know who this guy is. That's pretty cool. And that's it really cool. speaks to the genuine love uh, Kurt Angle has for the sport. Yeah. Kurt loves pro wrestling. Like, maybe too than... much. No, I mean, <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, but he could have easily left WWE when everyone was just like, who is this Olympic asshole? We do not like him. Get him off my show. Like, but no, he just stayed and he worked with the heat and he was awesome. Mm. And there I, is a we, timeline where he went to MMA and it makes me sad that because he just gets knocked out. Yeah, he would just get his ass whooped. He would be yeah. Ben Askren, sadly. Yeah. The uh the second fall is where like the shit for me really starts mm. um as the yeah. submission guy uh because Nigel uh, he's such a bully uh the way he keeps going for the arm triangle and just sort of like just bouncing Angle's head off the mat each time <laughs> he reapplies it is so fun. That's pretty yeah. Cool. A lot of the grappling stuff really gets lost on me. So, I mean, Squill, I'm sure you have plenty of notes on this part. I, I had mentioned the... I, now that we know it's called the London Dungeon, I'll refer to it as something other than a bit shit arm bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, it looks good. It's just conceptually it's shit. Yeah, that's, yes. that's mostly what I mean. Uh, good counter. I'm sure there was a good counter somewhere in there. Oh, well, it's it's just it's such good train wrestling, and this is very mm. much you know more so uh, angles uh, sort of territory. For sure, um, but there do Nigel's reciprocating a surprising amount uh, in like sort of the amateur wrestling department, uh, which yeah. I really, I really mm. think is awesome because like, you know, you know leading up to this match, he and Angle were, like, chaining for, like, 30 minutes to prepare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, they go oh, yeah. tit for tat, and I, 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 seldom rare have I ever seen an Angle match where he's facing off against someone that can go with him. I mean, like, Nigel puts sure. on a Kimura lock on Kurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looked awesome. <laughs> and then suddenly flashbacks of Daniel Puder came up in Kurt Angle's head. <laughs> the star red. <laughs> No, because no, 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 because he was purple squirrel. Oh, oh, my apologies. At this point, anyway, Kurt yeah. is purple. My brother is being the hat man as we speak mid-match. <laughs> the thing is, though, knowing Kurt, he probably would have not been mad if Pewter did break his arm. She probably would have been really impressed. Like, what the fuck, me? You actually did break my arm. Because I feel like, yeah, because I feel like the, the, <laughs> then, then the WWF would have been way more mad than Kurt would have been. <laughs> yeah, for sure. True. <laughs> he also might have just not noticed because he was on so many drugs when the arm broke. It's the listen. This guy won a gold medal with, and I cannot stress this enough, a broken freaking, freaking neck. Neck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he would have noticed if his arm broke. I'm just saying. I think it would have like like Wolverine X Factor like healed. Okay, so there's also a weird style. realism uh, to those aforementioned slams I talked about earlier, where he's like bouncing him off the mat. It was that a, a real way um, you can use the arm triangle uh, in submission grappling, which I literally did as of uh, Monday, um, is if someone is trying to like posture up uh, and turn to their side to get out of mount, mm -hmm. um, you grab around their neck and sort of just push them back to the mat, and it creates the immediate threat of the arm triangle so you can like regain control. And it's just so weird to see Nigel doing that. But in a good way. <laughs> For sure. Do uh, you have any other thoughts on the submission portion, Sam? Other than the, other than just some of like was just genuinely like 
pleased to see Nigel kind of be kind of being on Angle's level like he has. Like he had, he does the armor plata, he gets a Juji mm. Katami at one point, and of course he gets the London Dungeon in. But I feel like Angle's like uh, most of the time when he's doing it, it's like in like in the match, like during that fall, Angle's like, "Oh, get off! Fuck this shit! I'm putting the ankle lock on you," <laughs> <laughs> and he finally gets the ankle lock on Nigel though for the fall. It's awesome. And it's really great because he counters out of it a few times, and so there really is a sense that, like, that once he actually gets it, Nigel's like, fuck! Like, <laughs> yes. I, I thought I had this. Yep. <laughs> and so we enter the final fall, the cage escape. Um, and normally I hate cage matches where escape is an option. Um, you have to be fucking, like, mm -hmm. you know, it really uh, pull that off. And mm. these guys are not that far off in uh, skill. No. I agree. Even if Nigel is held together by, like, chewing gum, and Kurt is held together uh, by, like, enough Percocets uh, to kill the average uh, Atlanta rapper. Um, Speaking he's... of insane energy, oh, uh, I yeah. hate to interrupt, uh, but Angle is wearing... The f crazy, my man is wearing black Air Forces. Yes, he in literally the middle of is. The match. Yeah. He's, we noticed that. He's literally wearing black Air Forces. Yeah. <laughs> and like the high ones with the strap, like objectively one of the uglier shoes to ever released. <laughs> no, I first they make for comfy wrestling shoe. <laughs> I guess so, man. Ugly as balls, uh, gr good enough for Kurt. I just can't imagine wrestling in Air Forces, but more power to him. Good for him. Because the yeah. traction shit on them. No, for sure. <laughs> it's for aura, not uh, <laughs> practicality. And so they sort of go back into bomb mode. Um, we've had our little thoughtful portion. Now it's time for death. Just beating the piss out of each other. Uh, geez, uh, Angle's bald ass head gets split open. Yes, as Angle is one to do, which is just literally just him getting like just slammed into the cage. Yup. I'm unclear. I... I'm unclear whether it was even blading or the hard way. It's often hard to tell with his bald ass head because I think there's so much scar tissue on it, it breaks open really easily. No, for sure. Mm. Sort of Diaz Brothers esque. Yeah, I was about to say Vanderlei esque as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Vanderlei could be his cousin from Brazil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be out of the pair of them. All I can say is, I can't let you get close. Yeah, <laughs> one now, one that, now. That is indeed. that is a crazy cookout, by the way. These dudes are grilling, and they are as Cart Angle and Vanderlei Silva. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Mark Coleman's in the background as well, oh. just the edit of <laughs> <laughs> These are the craziest looking dudes of all time. <laughs> wow, uh, but they. I, I can't really say much other than like big slams, the moon salt, of course, the perks, the perk drop. Yeah. Uh, one of the safer looking perk drops. Um, as safe as a perk drop can get. We're yeah. grading on a scale here, uh, but compared to the one I talked about in my video versus Mr. Anderson, where he very nearly just straight up kills himself uh, mm -hmm. by landing on his head. Um, might have killed both of them because he almost landed his head on uh, Mr. Anderson's head to create like yeah. a shoot flying headbutt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chris but Benoit here he's ass safe. bump. Yeah. Um, and it has one of the best, like, normally cage matches don't have this dynamic of a finish. Normally they kind of end kind of limply when it's a cage escape. And yeah. it just kind of makes me sad. Because one guy just kind of stumbles out while the other dude crawls at him. Um, but having Angle climb the cage while Nigel sort of like crawls over to try to get out of it is mm -hmm. so fun watching yeah. him race. I love because the fact Angle... that. Yeah, oh, continue. I, I love the fact that it all started and was set up with Angle cake making Nigel pass out from the ankle lock. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Austin, like Austin and Brett style at WrestleMania 13, where Nigel's in a pool of his own blood, and, yeah. then, he, and then when he re he comes to and realizes, wait, no one's in the ring, looks up, goes, oh fuck, and goes for the door. Yeah, and it, 
it's an example of great, like, at least the way I use wrestling psychology isn't that it's supposed to be realistic, but that you can see the motivations and, like, the uh, the decision-making yeah. um, of them, like, in real time. Yeah. Uh, and normally, like, the antithesis of that is when it's a little too cooperative. Um, but here, it fully feels like that's the smart decision. And that's often, like I said, my example or my uh, problem with uh, cage escape matches. Uh, mm -hmm. When it looks like, you know, one guy just decides to lay down now. <laughs> well, yep. that's the cage. Because you either have to be so brutal, like in the Mr. Anderson batch, where it's like, yeah, he's dead. I believe it. Um, yep. Or in this case, which is more the Brett and Owen sort of thing. I think it's pretty cool how it like angle is clearly trying to like go for one more perk drop yes before leaving the... but nigel is a wolf hammer uh mm -hmm. is going for the door and uh angle has like a moment of realization where it's just like well time to end the match yeah <laughs> and he it's looks so at, good. he looks disappointed which is that awesome. he doesn't get one more yeah mm -hmm. very very cool uh yeah and arguably, this would be the peak of his DNA run, sadly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you boy. guys, uh, either you guys have closing thoughts on this match? Um, good. Good match. Is this a pay-per-view match? Final yeah. resolution, brother. <laughs> I think this is a very good TV match. I hope it's not the main event. No, uh, that would no, be no, no. too. That would be too, uh, like good for TNA. <laughs> yeah, that's what's great. What that's what's great about it is that um, in TNA, like the mid card will have like the greatest, like uh, one of the, some of the greatest matches you've ever seen, mm -hmm. and then like you know the main Fuck. event is like Hulk Hogan just staring versus at, Kevin Nash, and they're just looking at each other. Oh, they're, they're gonna get at it. They're going to rough each other up. Watch in out. In fact, uh, okay, this actually isn't that bad. Um, the main event is AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels. Oh, okay. the TNA title. Yeah, the that's TNA actually... Title. Also, Bobby Lashley and Scott Steiner have a match on this. That Yo! sounds fucking awesome, actually. When they say booking for the sickos, that's what they're talking about. You're damn that's right. the, that's, that the, actually, that's the yummy shit. That actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I would I would watch listen, if it's got Scott Steiner's name on it, I'm watching it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing his um, goofy ass bend down, go on his knees and do the flex crazy style. He is a crazy looking human being. Well, we can't talk about Scott Steiner because we're trying to wrap up this episode. Mm -hmm. Uh so but, yeah. The structure of these, like we uh established, is you know, walk the less experienced wrestling and I know that you're going to recommend Nigel McGuinness. Like, uh, we've established this. Like, uh, but have you have you gained anything about Nigel McGuinness? Because you you had only seen um, the Danielson match, the right? Best of the best. Yep. So uh, you've only seen the Unified match, right? Yep. I've Which, seen... to be fair, is his best career match. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I want to see the Takeshi Morishima match at some point because uh, I really like Morishima. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've gained a little bit more information on like what Nigel can really do, uh, beyond like the pure rules, which I love the pure rules for the mm -hmm. record. Yeah. Uh, always a good little extra sport feeling to it. Uh, very cool. Very uh, British. Very. Ooh! Um, but well, I, I have once described um, the world of sports style grappling as fruity catch wrestling, um, <laughs> and is. that some pure it's rules so is in that vein. Yeah, it's in. This... I can say that I'm bisexual. This is Pride Month. <laughs> Pride Month, everybody. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend these matches. Uh, yeah, good stuff. And uh, Sam has revisiting your boy uh, made you a little happier. It always does. It always does. Even his mm -hmm. TNA run, dare I say, to a certain degree. <laughs> Even with well, it, but we're at the point where it's great, and then now, uh, but because because we're not at fortune yet. Thank God. <laughs> 
where what's, Wolfenstein what's sad to me the is New Order joins the There's fortune. a universe in which they just let they just let him face like Angle and Joe, uh maybe AJ Styles, where they just let him do his thing in the mid card. Yep. Um but I don't know why they thought he had to do anything different from that. Because when they signed ROH workers, um like Loki or Austin Aries. Uh, Loki is still not responded to single combat. Um, but <laughs> when they sign those guys, normally they just had them do like, you know, mid card shit. I'm not hmm. sure why they decided Nigel had to be different. It's bizarre. And I don't think we'll ever really find out the answer, honestly, <laughs> unless Nigel does a shoot interview. Answer it's... squills emails. Answer my Mr. email, Nigel McGinnis. I was going to say, could he could he do a shoot interview as part of a magic show though for Squill? <laughs> that would that would is how he'd have to do it. <laughs> uh, uh, as a closing note, I, I've said this in private, but I think the how Nigel's career should have gone is he should have gotten the TNA and then gotten poached by WWE and then feuded for John Cena and won the Intercontinental Title. Uh, and then get disillusioned and leave in like 2018. You That's could. how his career should have gone. Agreed. You could. You could have had a John Cena ver America versus UK thing. It'd be sweet. Yeah. And then uh, inevitably he gets like disillusioned and uh, goes and wrestles on the European Indies uh, before they go to shit. <laughs> That's what should have happened. It really should have. And then it he gets really smashed through happened. glass by Braun Breaker. And then he gets smashed through glass by Braun Breaker. <laughs> yeah. uh, but other than that, I think that's about the show, unless either of you have anything to add. Nigel McGuinness is cool. That Great. he is. Uh, well, this has been Bocce Bocce Book Club. Seems like we're going to be able to keep our uh, weekly episode. Um, so Saturday, we'll probably have another episode out. Peace.